come to Calvary International Christian Center. Our much awaited convention is finally here with us. Hallelujah. It is a very good place for us to all gather together to give praise and thanks unto the Lord. The Lord who has finally brought us this far in Psalm 136. Psalm 136. From verse 1, the Bible says that all give thanks unto the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord of laws, for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretcheth out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great light, for his mercies endureth forever. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Shall we give thanks and praise unto the name of the Lord God Almighty? For his has been good unto us. Finally, the one of this convention, the matter convention, is here with us. And you and I have made it here. Shall we say a prayer unto the Lord? Father in heaven, we want to bless you. We want to thank you this evening for bringing us this far. We are grateful unto you, Lord, for such a great opportunity to be part of such a convention, to be part of a great encounter with you, Lord. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you take over this atmosphere. We pray that you touch every heart here in this service. We pray that you minister unto every soul. We pray that you meet everyone at the point of their knees. We pray that let every expectation of every heart here be met at this moment in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you, Spirit of the Lord, for being with us. Amen.
This is a time you want to forget about every other thing. You want to realize now that all that matters now is the name Jesus. And you want to lift up the name Jesus with me in this moment. You want to thank him. You want to adore him. You want to praise him this moment as we are gathered before the Lord God Almighty. It is very important that you worship him, that you lift his name on high. And this moment, you want to touch the heart of the Lord with your praise. It is the praise coming from your heart that you want to lift up unto the Lord this evening. You want to magnify the name of the Lord Jesus. You want to say, indeed, your name is mighty. Your name is wonderful. Your name has done mighty and wondrous things in my life, Lord. I bless your holy name, Jesus. I thank you, mighty God. I worship your name, Lord, for being so good unto us. For being so good unto us. This moment, Lord, your church, we are right here blessing your holy name, Jesus. Blessing your holy name, worshiping the name of the Lord God Almighty. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the I am that I am. He is the great King. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. That is the God you are here to worship. That is the God you are speaking to this evening. You want to ensure that your heart is speaking unto the Lord. You want to ensure that you are pouring out your heart unto Him. You want to lift up your eyes unto the hills where the Lord is and you want to lift up his name with me this evening as we are gathered in this presence in this time in such a season a period of revival it is a time of the former and the latter reign the reign of his presence in your life in Psalm 85 Psalm 85 from verse 1 he says that Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sins. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thy anger. Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thine anger toward us to cease. Would Thou be angry with us forever. Will thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Will thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? This is one prayer you want to make. You want to tell the Lord that, Lord, revive us again as we are gathered in your presence this evening. Spirit of God, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We thank you that you have been with us gathered us in your presence in this moment of revival we know that this is a season this is our set time this is the time for deliverance this is the time for liberation of your people we bless your mighty name jesus that this very moment you are manifested in our midst you are manifested in your church to touch every life to touch every soul in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah it's a time of praise to join us as we praise and magnify the name of the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Amen. I can't hear you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to shout. Hallelujah. Amen. I know we are tired. We can do more. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just give another big shout. Hallelujah. I just want to see everybody dancing, amen. Clap your hands. Hey, hey, hey. Just want to say Hosanna to the Lord. Oh, 
for him we am because when we see
Father, this evening we come before you, crying out to you that we will receive a word from you, that we will receive a touch from you, that, Lord, we will not leave here the same as we came, Lord, that these three days will be a tra life-transforming time for us. Revive us, Lord, spirit, soul, and body. May we be touched by your word. May we be touched by your presence. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Have your way. Have your way. Touch every life. Touch every heart. We bless your holy name this evening. And let the church of God say amen. amen. Oh, you can do a better amen. amen. You can do a much better amen. My faith is contagious. Nope. You, go, you don't smell anything. I said my faith is contagious. I smell something. Hallelujah. 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 Camp is over. Conversion has started. I said hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor, are you the right person for me to be sitting by in these three days? Or should I move? Listen, when you have come to receive from God, and when you purpose that you will receive everything God has packaged for you, you have to also be aware of your neighbors. Yes. Even sometimes you can have neighbors that your delivery is dropped by then. They don't bring it to your door. So you have to check your neighbor. If they didn't come to receive anything, you can just say, um, excuse me. And then go and find yourself a neighbor who has come with a mission and a purpose. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody, welcome to the mega contagious church. Oh, say it like you are contagious. And tell the person your life will never be the same again. Because you came. And because I'm sitting by you. Somebody give the Lord a shout. We want to drive every foul spirit every demon, every spirit of tiredness, anyone that is fed up, anyone that is about to give up, anyone that is discouraged, anyone that is struggling with something, I said give the Lord a shout! You always have a choice to either elevate your God or elevate your problem. But tonight we choose to elevate our God. Tonight, we choose to lift our God high up. The most high God. The most high God. The most high God. The most high God. So now give the Lord a better shout. Now when I say, I smell something. My faith is contagious. Ask your neighbor, but you do understand what I'm saying. Tell them next time, come for come. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I want to welcome you to day one of our revival convention, our summer convention. And I can tell you that the Holy Spirit says that I should let you know that your life will never be the same again. Whether you like it or not, your blessing is not by choice. It is by force. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. It is such an awesome time. I am just so excited. I don't even know what to do with myself. 
Amen. Yeah. You know, I think that before we even go forward, can we put our hands together for all the camp organizers? Administrators, hospitality, and our amazing media team. Oh, I think we can clap for them. Our praise and worship and musicians. Do you know that playing for five days, singing for five days, ushering for five days, hammering for five days, is that a word? Okay, we've made it today. You can use it now, isn't it? I think there's an urban dictionary that you can add to. So go online, add one more word. Come around, come around, come around. Yeah. Yes, I think that doing it all week, and as the week progressed, you realize that they were introducing new things, isn't it? Yeah, we don't even know what they'll be doing by the end of the week, but we are happily excited that we have people like you to make us have enjoyable meetings and service. How many of you feel the five days went by so quickly? For those who were not at camp 2022, the, by the grace of God, next year come 2023, say Scotland, here we come. Yeah, it's going to be awesome in the cold. I will still be summer, so hopefully it will be cold. But when you go for a camp in the cold weather, it's very, very good. It makes you stay focused. <laughs> you have to stay focused to keep warm. I'm waiting for people standing and all to settle because uh, you're making me feel dizzy. Amen. Hallelujah. We have um, an amazing set of, you know, guest artists and guest groups. If you want them to minister to us, well, clap before I will introduce any of them. If you don't clap properly, I'm not introducing them. You have to keep clapping. They didn't hear you. They are still waiting. And, um, yeah. Pentecost Choir, we welcome you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And, um. Our very own Kirombai Graves. I feel like you're part of the church, so I don't know whether we are supposed to, you know, even welcome you or not. Because me too, when I came, nobody welcomed me today. So I'm not actually sure whether we should be welcoming you. But just for um, protocol's sake, I think that um, we will welcome you. Or what do you think? Should we welcome him or we shouldn't welcome him? We should welcome him, yes. We shouldn't. We shouldn't. Yeah. I'm, I'm sort of in the you shouldn't camp, so... Yeah, we shouldn't. We, we will not. Do you know that Pentecost Choir, this is the last welcome you will get. Next time you come here, there will be no more welcome. Yeah. So, so enjoy your welcome. Then after that, we can also begin to send you around, isn't it? Yeah. But I believe that they are an anointed choir. I've heard them a number of times. And um, I want us to put our hands together and welcome the Pentecost Choir. <laughs> Oh, clap for them properly. Clap for them properly. Clap for them till they get here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. How many of us are here for Jesus? God bless you. We like to minister unto God form of worship and songs and revival songs we want the Lord to revive us tonight as we have come before him and we believe that the Lord is here to revive us and to meet us at the point of our needs amen this is the air I breathe This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence, living in me. My 
get even higher but we want to take a good offering this first night of our summer convention revive us oh lord you want to take out a good offering for the lord you want to take out a good offering for the lord and uh, we are going to have a very special guest he's not a guest i told you that he's not a guest at all at all at all <laughs> how many of us are excited I smell something I didn't hear you I said I smell something my faith is contagious my faith is contagious hallelujah let your offering be contagious. Let your offering be contagious. This weekend is a good weekend and a very fertile weekend. I mean, how many of you realize that as we started from Monday, every evening, there was even financial testimony. We're praying that God use us. God, we want to save you. God, we want to build a mega church. Then every day, somebody gets a new job. Somebody gets a promotion. Somebody gets their grant. Somebody gets a breakthrough. And we are saying, Lord, use us. Lord, we want to save you. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's very mysterious. It's very, very mysterious. Let's take a good offering. Father, we thank you so much. We bless your name. Father, we thank you for the privilege to give. 
out of our march and even out of our need. We ask that as we sow these seeds in these three days, O oh Lord, let us receive financial wisdom and understanding. Let us receive financial direction, O oh Lord, and let us be blessed in every area of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, I want us to put our hands together for my very own Kiran Bygrave. I think we can clap better than that. Praise God. Boy, it feels like home. First and foremost, I want to say this. I was not at camp because of Prince. He didn't, he didn't tell me. He didn't tell me. I'm just saying. So I, it sounds like I missed out on an amazing time. I want you to rise to your feet. We're going to give God some praise. And as you give your offering, whether you've given it online or not, I was given my excuse, but uh, I don't know what yours will be. But um, as we give, I want you to give with a gracious heart. And I want you to... As you get out your seats, I don't want to tell you to dance. I don't want to tell you to clap. I don't want to tell you to move. But if you feel it in your spirit, some of us, I, I can see some people breaking barriers today. Come on, strongholds will be torn down in this place. There will be a revival in the city of Leeds. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, I'm pretty sure you all know this song. And if you don't, I'm sure the words will come up on the board. Amen. So we go.
we go. Hear the sound of hearts returning to you. We turn. Washed away, washed away. Let me hear you. Oh. Come on, somebody say, Who's that? See, you are the God. You're worthy of all. Oh, 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 oh,
fall is your unfailing love. Your cross has spoken mercy over me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart could fully Your glory fills the skies. Your mighty works displayed for all to see. The beauty of your majesty awakes my heart to see. the media people will appreciate that the whole week, you know, we've been talking so, but somehow, I don't know, but we don't care if they don't even give us sound. Give the Lord a shout! Actually, my father is in the house, so I just remembered that we have to behave. We have to behave. Papa, we are sorry. We are, we are, we are. So now that we have apologized, somebody give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! 
No demon is allowed to rest in this place. No sadness, no sorrow, no frustration. No. I feel like there are like two small ones lingering around. I said give the Lord a shout! I, I just saw the last two leave. I literally just saw the last two leave. And since we want to prolong our lives, put your hands together for the Lord. Put your hands together for Keon by Graves. Keep your hands together for everybody who is... Put your hands together for yourself for coming to church. Hallelujah. On behalf of Reverend Grace, I want to welcome everyone to day one. Day one. Tell somebody it's only day one. Don't get tired. Fasten your seatbelt. And before we hear the word of God, we want to hear Calvary praise. Put your hands together for them. Oh, clap for them. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hall I need you to talk back to me. Hallelujah. Amen. In case you didn't know, you are in what's called the Calvary Cathedral. In my opinion, the best church in all of Westfield. Amen. Amen. salvation and glory, honor and power to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords. He is the reason why we're here tonight. Hallelujah.
wonderful. He can smell something. Hallelujah. I don't know how people can sing from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and sound like this. We have been here 12 hours every day 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Tuesday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Wednesday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Thursday, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. It's not, we're finished around 7 30, 8, 8 30, 9, 9 30. As for me, my voice is finished, but hey, who cares? I said I smell something. My faith is contagious. All right. All right, all right, all right. Somebody say, This is a church on fire. Say, This is a church on fire. Because we are running. How many want to do some running?
listen, listen, listen. Sit down. Behave yourself. Papa is here. I say, Papa is here. Behave yourself. Sit down, sit down. Pull your skirt, put your skirt. It's all that you are, it's all that we want now. Chasing out the road as you are, we are running. It's all that you are, it's all that we want now. Oh. Listen, this is what you did yesterday and something bad happened to all of us. Don't start. I said don't start. Hey, hey, hey! 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 Papa, we are sorry. Say it like a South African. Papa, we are sorry. As for you people, you always disgrace me. Stop it. Say we're taking over. Say we're taking over. We're taking over with the shoka guy. 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 Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. That's it. We are done. We are done. Amen. Listen, who said church shouldn't be exciting? I said, who just said church should not be exciting? I smell something. See, if you make church fun, people will want to come and experience your God. If you make church boring, people would not want to know your God. Why do you think people like going to parties? And they don't want to come to church. Some kids came for an excursion in this place. Because they are told, that the teachers are told them that when you go to a church, you must expect a cemetery. You must expect a vicar who has a long gown. So they came and they said to, them, to me, I was introduced, this is the vicar. The one kid asked me, where is your gown? And why do you look fun? 
because we we, we've been told that pastors, uh, uh, vicars look solemn. But that's not the type of church I belong to. I say that's not the kind of church I belong to. I belong to an exciting church. And, and, and the noise doesn't come from me. You've seen that the noise, the madness doesn't come from me. I am the good one. I've been trying to manage the crazy one. It's been 25 years that I've been trying to manage her and it's not working. Every medication that I give, he doesn't. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. You see, I'm trying to manage you. Your, the madness of your mother has come to on, upon you. Hallelujah. But I'm excited because we have a general in our midst. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I am very excited because the apostle of hope is here. I said the apostle of hope, the ambassador of hope is here. And uh, what, I, what I like so much about Dr. Frank is that he's going to challenge you to think. After you finish shouting, after you finish dancing, after you finish all the whatevers, you've got to think. Somebody say, I will think. Because I read somewhere in the Bible, I'm not sure where I saw it, but somewhere in the Bible it says that as a man thinks, so is he. So, if you want to be prosperous, you must think prosperous. If you want to be wealthy, think what? If you want to be above, think. So somewhere also in the Bible, it says, what sort of appear? If there be any praise, think on these things. Because thinking is important. It's amazing how people don't think when they come to the house of God. That is why Papa has come all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. All the way to challenge us to think. And, um, you know, guys, 1991 or two, maybe three, 1993. How many years ago was that? I was shabaranking in this church. I was shaboing in this church. You know the shabu? You play here, play there, play here, play there. <laughs> Flat rate. Yeah. That was many years ago. And one thing about Dr. Frank, he's been consistent. Consistently preaching the same gospel. Empowering lives. Changing lives challenging people to think if you're excited to hear him these three days stand to your feet let us welcome all the way from caris atlanta georgia caris house atlanta georgia the ministry of dr franco for Swapia. come on Shout to the Lord tonight if you have a voice, shout unto Him. Good evening. I didn't hear you. I mean, let me try it again. Good evening. Okay. It's better here than there. You see the jealousy in your eyes? Uh, no, no, no more second chances. No, no. No more. Well, I'll give you another opportunity, but um, look at somebody in the eye and tell the person you look better than you were yesterday. Now, if the person couldn't look at you in the eye, it means they've been gossiping about you. So try it one more time. 
You may not be on speaking terms with the person, but this is a time to make up. Tell the person you look better than you were last night. God bless you. Please be seated if you can. Oh boy. I, I, I can feel it already. 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 You know, I, I sat there and um, as the madness was going on. You know, I'm, I'm a very good student. I learned. So the, as the madness was going on, I think I'm going to carry the, the, the bell with me, you know. Get me one. Get me one. Get me one. Let me do, I need to be. <laughs> you know, I, I was thinking about the the theme is revival. And I said, what am I coming to revive? The thing is revived already. Because you revive something that is dead. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 maybe I came to cast some revival. How about that? But um, I, I really bless God. You know, um, when, when you are a preacher and you happen to travel as much as I do, there are some things that come to you automatically. You, 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 get, you put part of your brains on autopilot. And any time you are handed a microphone, some of the first things that you say is that I'm very happy to be here. It's very, I mean, you, you know what I mean. Those, some of those things that, you know, autopilot and thank you. One day I had been traveling, preaching, God knows how many, sometimes you leave your brains in another country and meet your intestines in another country. And I went to this place and honestly, I was tired. I didn't want to be there. And so I picked up the, they gave me, they gave me the microphone. My first remarks were, I'm happy to be here tonight. And I kind of, I don't know whether the Holy Spirit or holy me, but it, I just felt, are you sure? So I confessed and I said, honestly, I'm not happy to be here, but I'm obedient to be here. But tonight, I am happy to be in Leeds. Amen. I am so, so, so happy. I am very, very, very happy to be here. And uh, I, I want to say thank you to your pastors, Pastor Chris and Pastor Gloria. Listen, listen. Many times we appreciate and we clap a lot for those. Oh, that's my bell. Wow. The only thing is that I have a message called, don't ring the bell. You want to hear that? All right. Really? Maybe I'll preach that for you tomorrow if you like. No, it won't stop you from ringing your bell, but it's called, don't ring the bell. It's a leadership thing, but I like this bell. So it's mine or something? Okay, all right. Can ring it through the airport as I go on the plane? <laughs> but you know, sometimes we so much appreciate and we clap for the, uh, people who come and go like us. We come and we go. And we forget about those who come and stay with you. And your angels in this house are just amazing people. Pastor Chris, Pastor Gloria, God bless you. Stand to your feet and let's appreciate them. If you're not clapping, you're a suspect. God richly bless you. God bless you so, so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. Please be to all the leaders. God richly bless you. Um, I am I'm honored to spend these few days with you. Um, when Pastor Chris reached out to me, he knows the back and forth, the back and forth, but we made it happen. We made it happen, and I've been texting my PA, every so often she would text me, how she was so concerned, and I said, listen, forget it, these people are spoiling me, they are overwhelming me, it might be that I'm even changing my mind and, you know, no, I'm just kidding, no, wait, 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 you don't even know me, I, I don't know you, you don't know me, I don't like you, maybe you two don't like me, so, you, you never know what you are asking for. You know, the risk that your pastors do to get me here. Because if you guys think we can misbehave, some people too can really misbehave. But, you know, I, I told Alfred when he, I, I, I wore the jacket and I said, I feel strange in the jacket because I haven't worn jacket in before John the Baptist came preaching. You know, and he said, then why? And I said, I, I was coming to UK. UK, they wear shoes to sleep, you know, they wear ties to swim, you know, so I had to kind of, <laughs> so maybe tomorrow I have to quickly go and get myself some cool, you know, get some hoodies, you know. I, yeah, 
I, I tell my people, I tell my people, don't, don't, don't think you are taking over yet because I'm going to be like this for a very long time. You know, when you, in, when you see me and I'm about 200 years old, I'll still be like this. You know, if you see me holding, if you see me holding a walking stick, it's not for support; it's for style. I still pull my, I pull my pants down, turn my cap around, walk with a swag. You know what I mean? Anyway, anyway. You are wondering when is he going to start preaching? I've already started. You know that, that's the thing. We are, we are just, we are just. I, I'm, I, yeah. I like this. I'm, I'm really liking this house. I'm really liking this house. I'm really, really liking this house. But um, I'm so grateful to God for this, and it's been an amazing experience so far. And um, like Pastor said, I, I came here not with anything new. I came to add some building blocks to what they are already building in your life. Amen. If, if I can challenge you a little bit, if I can cause you to think, thinking is very important. You know, because your body will never go where your mind has not first been. Yeah, your body will never go where your mind has not first been. The sad thing is that, you know, Muslims go to their mosque and they take off their shoes. Some Christians go to their church and they take off their brains. And God commissioned Moses and said, go to Pharaoh and say to him, let my people go. He commissioned some of us and said, go tell my people, let my people think. And uh, the beautiful thing is that thinking is free. <laughs> you don't pay too much to think, so think big. Tell somebody think big. But tonight, I, I, I want to download something into your spirit, the word of God. You know, one of the things that people don't really appreciate is atmosphere. Atmospheres are very important. Because everywhere that you go carries an atmosphere. Never forget that. That is why it's very important the places that you go to. Because you cannot go to a hospital where there's the sick and the dying and the needy and be very happy. There's an atmosphere. You go to the football stadium, there's an atmosphere. And I tell people that we, are, we can all be in the same space, but we may not be in the same place. We are all in the same space. Let me give you an example. One time I was traveling, I was flying, Pastor Gloria, and we, we, we were in the aircraft, and there was a man seated here, there was a woman seated there, I was seated here, minding my business. I think I was reading. And this man was calling for the, uh, call the flight attendant, give me one more. Give, you know what I'm talking about? Hi hypocrite. Give me one more, one more glass. Give me, one, you know, I'm talking about the spirit without the ghost. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Without the holy. Okay. Give me, give me. Then the woman too was watching, I think, a movie and she was laughing. So here was one person laughing at something. Another person collecting more. More of the spirit. And here was another person busy reading. We were all in the same space. But we were in different places. These few days, I want you to be in a place. Where people will see you and, and know that something has happened to you. Am I talking to somebody? And so these three days I want to spend with you just to help you. And I, I want to push you a little bit. I, I, want, to, I want to place a takeover anointing on you. I want to, I want to place a go-getter anointing on you. I want, to, I want to finish and go and you, you, you know that you know that you are different. Some of you are going to refuse to answer to some names that people used to call you. Because people have tagged you with your experiences. Let me tell somebody, you are not your experience. You, you know how sometimes people like to tag people with their experience? How many of you have heard of the woman with the issue of blood? Anybody? I have a question. Did she get healed? Why are we still calling her the woman with the issue of blood? Anybody heard of blind Bartimaeus? Did he get healed? Why are we still calling him blind Bartimaeus? Because people like to tag you with your past experience, but you are not your experience. You are unusual. You are different. And that is who you, you are going back and you are going to reintroduce yourself to some people. Or oh, you didn't hear me at all. 
In the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 14, Matthew 14, let's begin to read from verse number 22. Matthew chapter 14, verse number 22. And I'm reading from the Bible. I'm reading from the Bible. Yeah, the last time I checked, it was still in the Bible. So, it's, the, it's still there, yeah. The Bible, yeah, the Bible. You have a Bible? Listen, if you are 25 and above, you turn to Matthew chapter 14. But if you are 25 and below, turn your tablet to Matthew chapter 14. <laughs> this is a generational thing. It's a generational thing. It's a generational thing. Verse 22, immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up onto the mountain by himself to pray, by himself. Now when evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Father, speak your word into ready hearts in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Determine that these few days after camp into the grand finale will be days that are life defining for you. Determine that your life is not going to be the same, same old, same old. Tonight, I pray that you resign from a life that is usual. Don't let this be another conference that we go to every year. Determine that after this summer conference, you'll be positioned to stand out and step out. Because I believe that I stand here today not because I just wanted to come or somebody called me, but I'm here on assignment for somebody. And assignment is to call you from where you are right now to where you want to be. Because hear me, people of God, all you have is not all there is to have. And where you are is not all there is to be. God wants to push you into something. I believe that every waking morning there are new messages that are screaming your name. There are new opportunities every day in your life. There are new doors that are sit, standing before you ready for you to assess. Every day, regardless of how last night was, you must wake up with a smile on your face because God has given you a blank check with your name on, with a signature, and he wants you to cash it that day because all the issues of yesterday are gone and they are gone forever. And a new day is here for you to do something. So long as there's a heartbeat in your chest, there's breath in your nostrils, do not give up because God has something for you. Wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever state you may be in, hear me, the, this, whatever you are going through, is not the end of your life. The bend in the road is not the end of the road. I'm going to turn around. I call it rewind. I said, the bend in the road is not the end of the road unless you refuse to turn. Let me tell you something. Jesus did not save you to come and live a life with a pause button on. And for many Christians, it looks like your life has been paused with the button on. You are on hold. Yes, you know in this world there are a lot of isms. Capitalism, socialism, communism, all kinds of isms. And unfortunately for some people in church, they have standstillism. But tonight I've come to remove you from the area of standstillism and I'm coming to push you into everything that God has. Listen, at the end of this time, I'm going to press not just the move button, but I'm going to press the fast forward button and God is going to give you some speed in this life and you are going to do amazing things. 
you will not be stagnant anymore you will not stop anymore you are going to stand out you are going to do amazing things i don't care how much frustration you have been through i don't care maybe you have gone so low that if you died they have to raise you in order to bury you i've come to say that there's still some hope for you tonight and your life will never be the same there are people that used to laugh at you but they begin to laugh with you there are people that looked down and thought nothing good can happen to you but i'm here to make an announcement that hold on well and watch me because a new person is rising out of here and something is going to happen in my life when you study the word of god when you study the activities of god in human life one of the things that you will not fail to notice is this that god is not static and because of that god's people must not be static we should not be stagnant our god is a dynamic god in the beginning when creation was in chaos the bible says that and the spirit of god moved there's nothing that can preempt the move of god in your life it doesn't matter how bad the economy is it doesn't matter whether they change political leaders every three weeks listen as a child of god you you may live in this same place but you in this same space but you are in, in a different place when jesus meets you something must happen to your life when he meets you in a prison house he turns your prison house into a penthouse when he meets you in the dungeons of despair he moves you to the diadems of delight he's the only one who is on record as saying that i can pick you from the dungeon and set you up with princes is somebody hearing me tonight and tonight i want to push you a little bit i want to i want i want to help you a little bit so that you don't stop where your father stopped so that you don't stop where your mother stopped so that you don't you don't you don't become like like a poster child for nothing happening in my life and tonight god wants somebody to hear this announcement that you are not ordinary oh you didn't hear me at all i said you are not ordinary look at yourself and say i am unusual listen when i say you are unusual i'm not saying you are abnormal but you are not normal oh you didn't get me at all i said you are not normal people must not be able to figure you out am i talking to somebody hear me i hope i hope you are beginning to get me listen if your enemies or your detractors can explain you easily without lying you are too ordinary i said if your enemies or your detractors can explain you easily without lying you are too ordinary you must become like an equation that cannot be solved because they saw you when you were going through the things that you were going through. They saw you when you had that break, breakdown. They saw you when you went through the betrayal. They saw you when you were, you were in pain. They saw you when things were not working. But they couldn't figure out why you can still come to church and your face is still shining and you are still dancing and you are still moving. Oh yes, they set that trap. But somehow the trap was broken and you escaped. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, let CICC say that if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, when the enemy rose up again, do you know how many obituaries were written for you in the spirit but somehow the hand of the Lord backed it up how can how dare you sit down and think that God hasn't done anything for you for if it had not been for the ladies and gentlemen you and I would not have been here that accident could have taken you that disaster could have taken you do you know how many people went to hospital and yet they came through look at what visited the world some two years ago and he put all the, the whole world on pause do you know how many times you even handled something that had a virus on it but somehow the hand of the Lord was upon you and you escaped this thing and you sit down like God hasn't done anything for you if I were you ladies and gentlemen I will scream to the highest heaven I am building a case tonight ladies and gentlemen I, I am building a case because I, I, I want you to have this renewed mindset and refuse to settle for the fact that I am common and I'm ordinary. That thing must not be in your, in, in your vocabulary. If only you, you saw what, how your enemy saw you, you'll be very happy. Why are you running away from the things that are supposed to run away from you? There must be some confidence about you because you know that you are not ordinary. What stopped others will not stop you. You are not going to be shaped by what is shaping the masses. Am I talking to somebody? Let me build a case. And this is the case. At the end, you are going to find out that what happens to them does not, 
determine what happens to us. I said, what happens to them will not determine what happens to us. It's not that we will not go through what they go through. All of us will go through what everybody is going through. I, 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 is somebody hearing me? We will all go through what people go through, but the end result is different. All of us can go into the lion's den, but we are coming out. Whoever went with us, I don't know what is going to happen to them. I, am I talking to some because we are different? Listen, let me establish this case. How many of you know that 90 year old women don't become pregnant? Anybody? 90 year women, do they become pregnant generally? But for the purposes of God to be manifested, God invaded the womb of a 90 year old woman and she gave birth to a son and named her Isaac to determine that what happens to them does not happen to us. Am I talking to somebody? You and I know, ladies and gentlemen, that waters don't open for people to walk through. We have to construct bridges. But for God's people to move from the captivity into their promise, the waters had to open for them and they walk through on dry ground. Why? Because what happens to them does not inform what happens to us. You and I know that walls don't fall down when we scream at walls. But for God's people to go forward into their promise, when Joshua and the people of Israel, when they shouted to the highest heavens, the walls of Jericho came down. How many of you will agree with me that birds don't feed human beings? In fact, human beings feed birds. But for God's purposes to come to pass to feed a prophet, God commanded ravens to act out of character to feed the prophet. I've come to announce to somebody that somebody thinks that they don't like you. But God will let them act out of character to bless you and don't understand. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. I say, I am talking to somebody. God Almighty will use somebody. You and I know that people don't die and they get buried and they are, they are put in the, in the grave for three days and they come back to life. But my Lord Jesus Christ, when he was crucified and they put him in the tomb, after three days he rose up triumphant and made a declaration that I am he that was alive and I died. But behold, I am alive forevermore. So I am telling somebody that this is not the end of your life. That it it doesn't have to end this way. Your story has not ended yet. People may think that it is over, but you and I serve a God who is on record as saying that I am the Alpha and I am the Omega. I am the beginning and I am the end. And the beautiful thing is that he is the author. And an author is a writer of the book. And every book is not just one sentence. There are sentences, there are paragraphs, there are chapters. And so let me tell you something. Maybe your chapter today is not very good, but we are going to turn over the page. And, oh my God, I feel something tonight. Say to yourself, I am uncommon. Say it like you mean it. We've just read a very interesting scripture. And the Bible tells us that Jesus and his apprentices, 12 apprentices, a.k.a. disciples. But then uh, he had fed thousands of people. And when he had finished, he sent them to get on a boat and go to the other side. Now, man of God, I picture these 12 people in a boat. And I call it the boat of containment. Because it was only one person who came out of the boat according to what we have read and got an experience that none of them will be able to talk about. With the exception of Simon Peter, nobody can say that I walked on water. But they were all in the same space. But they were not all in the same place. This is not just a passage. This is a picture that God is drawing to you. It's a powerful portrayal of something that can move you in life. I want to give you something that can move you in life. And it's, it's interesting that the Bible uses Simon Peter as our prototype. But say, gee, I just love this guy called Simon Peter. You know why? He reminds me of me. Anytime you see Peter, he's either in trouble, going into trouble, or just coming out of trouble. Anybody feels like that? Now, don't, don't look at me with that kind of eyes. You know what I'm talking about? Simon, Simon, I mean, <laughs> are there any hypocrites? You know, I don't like the way they are looking at me like that. Listen, Simon Peter has got his cousins in the church. I mean, don't look at anybody yet. Yet, 
Don't look at them. You know, Simon Peter is the, he, he has an anointing that to give a promise that he knows he won't keep. His mouth is signing checks that his heart won't cash. I'm spying them, I'm checking them out. You imagine if Simon Peter told the Lord, You see these guys, they will all betray you. Me, oh, I'll betray you. No, 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 I'll betray you. You, you remember that I said, Me, oh, I'll, I'll betray you. I'm going all the way. And Jesus said, Simon, you know what you're talking about? He said, oh, you, Even you, Jesus, you, you don't know nothing. What do you know? Even you, Jesus, you don't know anything. And you know the story. When Jesus was arrested, Simon Peter was following at a cool distance. And when they were whipping the master, the Bible says that he was warming himself by a wrong fire. When you warm yourself by a wrong fire, you betray your master. A small girl comes to you and says, you look like one of the disciples. He said, no, not me, not me. <laughs> Strike one. Number two, the girl comes again and says, I think I've seen you with the man. He said, me, oh. The girl said, no, your accent. You speak like a the man changes accent. He said, Me no come from Galilee. Man. Me come from far away Jamaica. Me no, me no know this Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Me, me no know Jesus, man. You, 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 you know that thing. And you know the beautiful thing about Simon Peter is this, man of God. That all the time that he was working with Jesus, he had a knife. Classic church member. In time of praise and worship, Peter had a knife. It was when the pressure came that the knife came out. All of you, you have knives though. But because of praise and worship and because of church, you are hiding the knife. And say, I'm told, I tell you that you are a cousin of Simon Peter. You better believe it. Christians, they have a knife. When you cross them, you better watch your ears. <laughs> oh, I'm beginning to enjoy myself. <laughs> Listen. Simon Peter... The man is impulsive. The man is very temperamental. Like I said, you cut off your ears. Short notice. But Peter did something that none of these holy disciples ever did. He walked on water. I'm driving you somewhere. I want you to know that in spite of whatever people think about you, you are not usual. You are uncommon. There's something that you're about to do that will shock people. Because let you and I know that one of the most mundane things, expected things that all of us do is walk. There's nothing unusual. Walking is normal. Everybody is expected to walk. You, you agree with me? There are some things that are normal. When you are walking, nobody is going to say, hey, he's walking. No, it's only when a fish is riding a bicycle that people say, oh. But when you are walking, you are walking. In the Bible, people walk. Moses walked. Peter, and people walk. If, in fact, God walked. The Bible says that, and, and the, the Lord walked with Noah. Enoch, I beg your pardon. He walked with him. He walked with God. They walked. But in Matthew 14, what we read, we see a different kind of walking. Listen, if you're going to stand out, if you're going to be different, you, ha you have to do a different kind of walk. And it's walking on water. Tonight, I'm going to baptize water workers. Different. You are going to do things that nobody in your family has done before. But the narrative tells us that when Jesus sent them, Jesus said, Go. It was about some four or five miles, you know, right across the lake. And Jesus goes up into a mountain to pray. The Son of God, who had the anointing without measure, He's doing first things first. That is why I'm so excited about camp. Because it was a time Jesus was refueling, He was recharging. He was refocusing for the assignment and he's teaching us one of the greatest secrets to advancement in life. The sad reality is that there are too many people who are operating on empty. That is why you are so fearful. You are so frantic. You are so frustrated all the time. Looking at you just makes us feel tired. But listen, the beginning of your advancement starts with prayer. Jesus said to the 12, you go. I'm taking care of business here and I'll be with you. They go and they are rowing. And Jesus goes to the mountain to pray. Whilst they are rowing, he's praying. 
And the Bible says that there was a contrary wind. There was a contrary wind, which means they, they were rowing with difficulty. It was hard. They were, they were stretching. They, their, 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 their muscles were, were at the break point. They were sweating. They were forcing. And the man was praying. And the Bible says that early in the morning, Jesus is seen walking close to them. And I said, how could this be possible? And what can I learn in there? The power of prayer will give you the power to advance quicker than all your competition. You didn't say amen, but that's fine. No, 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 no. I'm, 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 I'm going to buy some amen from town and come and distribute them to you. I said, the power of prayer will empower you to get there quicker. You didn't hear me at all. Maybe right now you may feel that you are behind in life. But listen, the race is not over. When you begin in prayer, you begin to work on the things that other people sink in. That is why prayer is so important. That is why I thank God for coming. I guess you are fasting too, Mama G. Fast and pray. Yeah, fast the way before. Fasting is such a, such a discipline. Have, have you realized that you can go the whole day and not eat and feel okay? Until this, your mouth says, I'm fasting. Anybody knows what I'm talking about? That thing is warfare, ladies and gentlemen. That thing is warfare. You, are, you, are, you say, I'm fasting by nine in the morning. You are beginning to see people two, 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 two. And anybody knows what I'm talking about? Haven't you realized the moment your, 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 your pastor said, we are fasting. Then all of a sudden, your first question, when are we breaking? And when I was in high school, I had also, sometimes you can be praying. I mean, you are in the spirit. You are fasting. You are taking dominion. You are releasing angels. Some of them will be come to report back to you. I mean, you, you are re rearranging. You know our Pentecostal charismatic prayers. We are rearranging things. We are taking charge. We are taking dominion, walking over, trading over. You know all those Thank you. The way you're pulling, I don't like that at all. You know, I'm a shy man. Please, can you give me a better face? <laughs> Sometimes, man of God, you are busy, you are fasting, you are praying, you are sanctifying your house. You go into the kitchen to sanctify, then the fridge will open by itself. Miracles. Miracles. Miracles of biblical proportions. Then you want to check that thing, then some food, food that ordinary would even want. The food will jump out and attack you in the mouth. You close your mouth to protect yourself and realize you have eaten. <laughs> you should see the way they are looking at me. Oh, really? Oh, so then why are you looking at me like that? I don't like that. <laughs> I've told you I'm a very shy man. I don't even like talking. But listen, when you pray, you will work on what defeats other people. I say when you pray, you will excel in what limits people. When Jesus prayed, the people had had a hair start. But I said, hair start is not the issue. It's knee start that has the issue. And Jesus is teaching us by this that if you pray and when you pray, your prayer will fix your feet and your feet will work on what was designed to sink you. You didn't hear me at all. That is one thing that I learned. He said, you go, but I'll be... Then the man, he was praying. And the second thing that I learned is about this. Now hold your horses. Thank the brother who said that people must put on their seatbelt. Please listen. It's about how Peter advanced. Peter is in the same boat with 11 other people. I call them boat potatoes. We have couch potatoes, we have boat potatoes because they won't get up out of the boat. And every one of you listening to me tonight, you have some 11 in your life. There could be family members, frenemies. <laughs> you know frenemies? There are some people you call friends. If those are your friends, you don't need enemies. Co-workers. Business partners. Church members. 
They are all in the same boat. They are all in the same boat, 12 of them. But it's only one, only one who had audacious faith enough to say, Lord, if it is you, I want to come to you. He became the exception. It was unusual. He refused to let what was containing them contain him. Simon Peter refused to let the limitations of the other 11 limit him. He knew that he had never walked on water before. All of them knew that. But he said, I will do this thing and I'll come back to it. I have a question. Who are your number 11? Who are your 11? Now, there may not be like one, two, three, four in America. It could be one person who is your 11. You go to school with them. You go to church with them. You go to work with them. Excuse me, some of you are married to them. Don't look at, don't, no, no, don't look at him. Don't look at him. Don't spoil my message. Who? Who is your 11? Because I am sure, woman of God, that when Samuel Peter said, Lord, if it is you, let me come. It, it may not have been recorded, but you can imagine the atmosphere in the boat. Who do you think you are? You are always talking. Every time you are talking. Simon Peter, do know. Do know. Whoever walked on water. Ever since you were born. Do you have any empirical proof? Do you have scientific proof that anybody. Don't you know that any, anybody that is heavier than water sinks? Where did you go to school? Are you a duck? Are you Peter Duck? And uh, you, you mouth, mouth. Every time. Ye, every Simon Peter. Today we will see who is who. You have people like that in your life. So I have a question. Who are the 11 in your life? Who is determining what is possible and what is impossible for you? I wrote in my notes, they will be quiet when I get here. And look at me. Who is determining? You know there are some people in your life. Anytime you determine to do something, they will pour water on it. Oh, you can't. Oh, we know you. Oh, we can't. You have people like that. They are, no, they are 11. They are number 11. In your head, don't tell them, but in your head, call them 11. You can even store their number 11. Why is a group limiting you? Why? Why is your nationality or your color limiting you? Why? I want you to remove that. Listen. Wherever I come from, there's one thing that almost every time I go to a conference, I go to a round table, somebody will find a way to ask me where I come from. You know what I mean. People will just check you out. And one time, I think we were in Colorado, um, HB London, focus on the family. The man was retiring, so they called some of us leaders in America for his retirement thing. And uh, we sat at the banquet table. And I gave my wife warning that, honey, tonight my turn will come. She said, don't start here. I said, I will do it. I said, I am feeling it. it. It has to come. My body is itching because somebody will ask me, where do I come from? And I have to do my thing. She said, oh, don't. I said, oh, I'll do it. No, I do it once a year. This is my opportunity. So in our conversation, then this man looks up and says, where do you come from? And in my nicest American, I said, I come from Atlanta. That's Atlanta. Alana. He said, no, no, I mean originally, and I said originally from Atlanta. He said, no, no, your accent. Then that is why he played into my hands. No, the place was quiet, you know, we hung. then I raised my voice. I raised my voice once a year. So that was the day. I said, I don't have an accent. I don't have an accent. Oh, and the man said, oh, I said, I said, I don't have an accent. When you come to where I was born, you have the accent. So I don't have the answer. That is why in the way we are meeting today, there are some nations that they call the place church. And other people say church. And other people say church. Whichever it is, whether it's church, 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 it's a place that God is. There's, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing as annoying as somebody who has eaten some local foods like fufu and things and your, as your tongue is set and you are trying to change it in your old age. You look stupid. Just be, tell somebody be yourself. Thank you very much. God be where I come from. There are some people, if you want to punish them, you have to let them pronounce some words with the R in it. You can't be angry because that's where I come from too. You don't know how 
tongue will suffer to pronounce parallelogram. Who told you? Am I blessing somebody? Who told you you can't do it because you are a woman? Who, whoever told, who sold you that lie? That because you are a woman you can't do it. In this house, ladies and gentlemen, take the limits of you. I said take the limits of you. Am, am I talking to somebody? Take the limits of you. It is not your gender that matters. It is who, who lives on the inside of you. Why have you allowed people who have never walked on water to determine your limitation? Some of you, the reason why you are the way you are, you are listening to the wrong people. Wrong people. You are listening to wrong people. I tell people, I say, you see these two things by my head? They are not trash bags, though. That you can pour trash. No, 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 no. You can't. I'm telling you. No, thank, they are not bring bags. Yeah, thank you for leads. They are not bring bags. You can't put trash, rubbish in my ears. No, 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 no. The ears are for hearing. The book says that there are many voices in the world and none of them is just scriptures. Which means every voice that you hear will either inform or deform you. What are you hearing? Listen, listen, listen. What, what people are saying is not as important as what you choose to hear. You didn't hear me at all. I said, <laughs> what people are saying is not as important as what you choose to hear. It's your choice. One time when we were growing up, we used to do what we call, I'm, I'm sure you know, dumb broadcast. We would go from place to place preaching behind people's windows. And there was this man, he was a womanizer in our area. So I like to preach over there. And we preach the gospel according to the situation. And, and one day he came out and he was angry. We are spoiled this morning. And he came, he was cursing us. You boys, you never amount to anything. Blah, blah. He went and my friends were shaking like, hey. and I said, was he talking to you? Was he talking to me? He wasn't talking to me. So if he was talking to you, take it. Do I, like, like, do I look like so, someone who, who has been cursed? So what people are saying is not as important as what you choose to hear. And whilst I'm in that neighborhood, let me say it again, that what you see is more important than what is happening. You didn't hear me. I said what you see is more important than what is happening. Why do I say that? Why do I say that? The Red Sea is in front of them and the people are crying out and Moses says that stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. For the Egyptians that you see, he didn't say we see, he said you see. So if you are seeing, see. Because what you see determines how you act. What are you seeing? You know what I'm seeing? I see this house taking over. I say, I see this house taking over. Whoever told you you are too young? Whoever? That person needs to be arrested. Whoever told you? How old? How old physically was Jesus? How old was David when he took down Goliath? How old? And whoever told you you are too old? Too old for what? I told my child that, listen, me, if you are waiting for me to retire, you are going to wait for a long time. Because I don't retire, I refire. Am I talking to somebody? Oh yeah, you know, all my, I, I hate to use that word, but let me use it loosely. All my classmates, because when I got born again that night, I got born again alone, so I don't have classmates, but let, let's use it that way. All my classmates, a lot of them have died. They have lost their teeth and they say, me not me. I am 65 years as I talk to you, 65. Listen, I still got my swag. You, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. You, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean? Because you are as old as you are. Some of you, you are only 25 and you are retiring. You better refire. 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 Get some swag, man. Put your hoodie over your head, man. Just bend yourself a little bit and walk with a swag, man. Who, who, who is your 11? Who is your 11? That are keeping you in containment. Who is using your past mistakes against you? Let me talk to somebody. Let me tell you something. 
anybody who dares to put to, to use your past against you have dared to put the blood of Jesus on trial. Because the blood is powerful enough. I said the blood is powerful enough. Say your past. What past? You are a brand new creature. For if anyone be in Christ, the book says he becomes a brand new creature. All things have passed away. Stop, stop crying over what your old life did and begin to rejoice about what your new life has done to you. Listen, it was only Simon Peter, the 12th person who got out of the boat. If you want to advance, if you want to step out, if you want to be something, you must, will, you must be willing to leave some people in their boat of limited thinking. Limited. Listen, if you have stinking thinking, you have stinking living. For most of you, the chains that hold you are not metal, they are mental. Mental limitations. The story is told about the, the, the story is told about oh really? Maybe I was hiding somewhere, I don't know. Let me tell you, the story was told, a true story about a traveling gypsy group who had a brown bear. And this brown bear was kept in a 12 foot by 12 foot cage. All it knew was 12 foot, 12 foot, 12 foot. That was his life. And one day, as they were traveling through Germany, the Herdebeck Zoo heard about this unfortunate creature and decided to make these gypsies an offer they can't refuse. So they bought this unfortunate little bird. Then they took it to the Herdoberg Zoo. The zoo is expansive, mountains, beautiful waters filled with salmon. I mean, amazing. And they knew that this bear would be very happy. And so they set the bear down and they opened the cage. They were expecting the bear to jump out into liberty. The bear looked around at the liberty. The beauty of everything bowed its head. And started moving 12 foot by 12 foot. 12 foot by. So they tried and they moved this bear out of the cage and took the cage away. And they said to the bear, move. The bear looked around. Without the cage, it started moving 12 foot by 12 foot. All that did 12 foot. Even without the metal cage. Went on and on and on until all they had to do was to put this bear to sleep. And the newspaper man picked it up and asked, what happened? And somebody said, the issue of this bear was not the metal. It was the mental cage. And for some of you, the enemy and people have drawn demarcations for you. 12 foot, 12 foot. You are black. You are this. You are short. You are too tall. You are this. You failed your exam. You did this. My question is, who is putting limitations on you? Why are you still being in? Listen. From tonight, determine. Determine that you'll be number 12. Let the 11 stay in the abode of limit, but you are number 12 out of your mind. Listen, some of you need to buy a t-shirt and write in front of the t-shirt number 12. And when your, parents, your people ask you what they say, so you won't understand. It takes revelation. Oh my God. I said, it takes revelation to... <laughs> you, you did it. I said, it takes revelation to understand. And so when they say, what does it mean? They say, you won't get it. If you were you are in, in our revival, then you can understand that, that you may be number 12, but I am number, number, you may be number 11, but I am number 12. I refuse to stay in a boat and become a boat potato and allow people who have never been there to determine where I can go. Hear me? You were never created. You are not never born to live and die in the boat of limitation. The boat of stinking thinking. So if you have come from cultures that are jealous, they don't want people to rise. So long as you are all the same height, they are happy. You know why they don't like you? It's not because of what you drive or wear, but it's because of what you carry. Because pirates don't go after empty ships. You are something. There's something on the inside of you. You are a barrier breaker. You'll be the first person to break some barriers in your family. Simon Peter, he left the company of those 11 sisters, the sisters, the sisters, and he advanced. So, 
in the few minutes that is left, I'm beginning to finish. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You say, come and try and see. You think it's a joke. And for me, it's very sad when people really don't listen to me. I said, I am beginning to finish. I didn't say I finished. And my beginning to finish is longer than all the ones that I've done. So what's your problem? Wasn't it the same Simon Peter, because Gloria, who said, he wrote a letter. And First Peter, First Peter, in chapter number three, he said, finally, my brethren, and he wrote two more chapters. So finally, my brethren, including my sister, I am beginning to finish. I didn't say I finished. I am beginning to finish, which means this is only the beginning of the finish. I haven't even got into the middle of the finish and the finishing of the finish. You see the way I'm enjoying myself here in Leeds? <laughs> but there are three things that I want to give to you before I step out of your way. Never forget. This is what helps Simon Peter to get out of the boat, to walk on water, do something that nobody has ever done. Number one, you need exposure. I will explain it to you. You need exposure. Am I talking to somebody? Somebody say exposure. Now, look at it this way. Check this now. Check it out. Yes, Simon Peter. Pastor Gloria. This man has, it was a fisherman by trade. And in the culture that Peter came from, you inherit the trade of your father. And the father before him. So, all his life, all he had known was fishermen. They have fished. And fishing, you don't fish on dry ground. You fish on water. So, all his life, he had fished on water. It never occurred to him that human beings can walk on water, only boats. Because if you attempt to walk on water, you are going to sink. You will drown. So never did. Until the day he saw his mentor do it. Exposure. Exposure. Once he was exposed to Jesus doing it, it awakened something on the inside of him that wanted him to do the same thing. He said, Master, you are doing that is contagious. Master, you are doing it, so I want to do exposure, ladies and gentlemen. I have a question for you. Why do you see the things that God has allowed you to see? Exposure. Because once you get exposed, you will never be unexposed. That is why, please don't remain a village champion until you die. Yes. <laughs> you know, village champion. Uh, village champion. Where I come from, there are village champions. You go to funerals in their villages, they are the champions. Until they go to the city and they see like, say, hey, they are village champions. Don't be a village champion. No, no, no. Something must challenge you. You must be exposed to something. Because listen, everything that God allows you to be exposed to, it is intended to awaken possibilities in you. It ignites an appetite for better, for greater, for bigger in you. Am I talking to somebody? Hear me, exposure to greatness is an evidence of favor. One of the greatest manifestations of favor is when God gives you exposure. Exposure to somebody, a person. Exposure to a place or exposure to a thing. Never forget that. Never forget that. You see, unfortunately, many of us, we mismanage exposure with jealousy. So there are people who have things who will never tell us how it's done. I have people who have come around me to ask me. They come to our church, our facility, like, hey, how did an African do this? And uh, you know my answer? Grace. But you and, you and I know that grace alone doesn't do this. But I won't waste my time telling you because you are not ready for it. He told me not to cast my pearls before swine. So I am very, very, very interested in who I tell secrets to. Some of you don't have secrets. That's why you don't know who has been talking about you. That's another gospel for another day. Hear me. Exposure is favor. Because God wants you to know I can also do it. Yesterday I was talking to your parents. I was talking to your parents about one of my friends. Ron Carpenter. His, his father was my mentor. A very good friend of mine. He died a few years ago. And Ron Carpenter Jr. has pastored one of the largest churches in South Carolina, America. And in that state... People don't pastor more than 
100, 200 people. He church was about 15,000 people. And he said, I grew up in a pastor's house. And all my life, my, my father never pastored a church more than 50 people. That was it. That was all he knew. In the backwoods of South Carolina. He went to Emmanuel College in Georgia, small university. And he played the drums for the university choir. So one summer, they determined to go on a tour in America. So they got this bus and they were playing from church to church. And they got to Florida, Lakeland, Florida. To Carl Strader's church. The church is called the Carpenter's Home Church. Very interesting name. It was the first mega church in America. That sat more than 6,000 people. He had never seen anything like that before. He said when they pulled into the compound of that church, he was asleep. So they tapped him and said, Ron, we are here. Wake up. So when he woke up and he saw the thing, he said, what is this? And they said, it's a church. He said, no, no, no. What is this? They said, it's a church. He said, no. He, he come. He said, they said, it's a church. So they walked in and he saw it and he realized that it was church and he said, somebody has been lying to me. So this is possible and it ignited something on the inside of him. He graduated from university Started a church, redemption outreach with only three people. Bought a shower curtain as a backdrop and started. But that thing that was opened up on the inside of him in Castrader's church never died. And in some few years, he raised the biggest church in South Carolina. Why? Exposure. Exposure. God will let you see some things, not for you to be jealous. But he wants you to see some things to let you know that it is possible. Am I talking to somebody? Don't let, so, don't let exposure inspire you. Let it inspire you. You know there are sometimes even in church people can't testify. Because of jealousy. They raise their hand and say, oh, you have sense. No, I was just scratching my head. You, know? you need exposure. Am I teaching somebody? Sometimes go to places where you go and look stupid. Go and see what people are doing. It's like, wow. Every year, my wife and I, we go to places and go and sit down. It's like, oh Lord, I, I'm not even inspired. I'm inspired. Like, wow. This is happening here? I kid you not. I, I don't like mentioning names and things, but one time, you know, I took, East, East took him, Reverend Eastwood came to see him. He's a, a good friend of mine. And I took him to see a DeLong church. We walked in and he said, hey, it was like his jaws dropped. I had to give him permission to pick his jaws up. <laughs> and I said, you sit in Bulgaria and you think Bulgaria is the whole world? Exposure. At the point, he said, Pastor Frank, I have a headache. I said, deal with it. Amen. You must see things that will let you know you can do it. I go to conferences. Registration. $1,500 I pay for myself I pay for my, my wife and it's just about 6 hours and I sit down and I write notes like my life depends on it or of course it depends my pen is on fire I come back sometimes with 50 pages of notes because exposure I sit round table there are just 20 leaders in America and I'm sitting like I've not even learned the alphabet I'm listening to great people don't die a village champion don't stay in the boat and die get out Simon Peter, when he saw his mentor walking on water, he was exposed to the possibility. He said, I can do it. Am I talking to somebody? Number two, you need invitation. Invitation. Somebody say invitation. Why is your voice going down like that? I don't like that at all. You are not older than me and my voice is okay and look at you. Invitation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You see, even though Simon Peter was exposed to the possibility, he wanted to step out. He wanted to experience walking on water. He never stepped out until Jesus invited him. Jesus said, come. So I want to tell somebody here, don't act and live your life on presumption. Act on God's word for you. What is God saying to you specifically? 
Because I know there are people who pray, Father, the same thing that you did for so and so, do the same. Listen, what blessings me may bury you. <laughs> you didn't hear me. I said, what blessings me may bury you. Why do I say that? Listen, do you know why Pharaoh drowned? Do you know why Pharaoh drowned? Because he was following a word that was not for him. When the Lord said to Moses, go forward, he wasn't talking to Pharaoh. He was talking to Moses and Israel. And Pharaoh followed the word that was not his. That's why he drowned. Find your own word and follow your own word. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said, find your own word. Have a calm spirit. Stop running after other people's revelation. Today, today's generation, every, you, you like, what, what, is, what is the prophet seeing for me? What is the, sometimes, one time somebody came and sat before and said, Papa, what are you seeing? I said, I'm seeing video. We run around all over the, let me tell you something. The difference between revelation and divination is source. You didn't hear me. I said the difference between revelation and divination is source. What is the source of that thing that you are seeing? Why do I say that? When Simon Peter said to Jesus that you, 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 you are Jesus, the son of the living God. Jesus rejoiced and said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed, which means flesh and blood can reveal the source. He said it was not that, but my father who gave you. So that is why it's a revelation, not divination. So the fact that I can tell you your name and your phone number doesn't make me anything. Say, hey, hey, the, the man in Shabo, he told me my name. Are you stupid? You don't know your name. You haven't voted before. I mean, if I use the word stupid, forgive me. I'm trying to learn English. I came with a dictionary. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? Invitation. Somebody say invitation. Have a word from God. And follow the word. You remember when that, that man from Tarsus, Saul of Tarsus, on the way to Damascus, when he met the resurrected Jesus and was knocked off his high horse. When Paul stood before Agrippa or something and was recounting his testimony, he said, There were a lot in my company. We saw the lights, but I only heard the voice. That is why I'm t I said, There are some things I said at the beginning. When you go home and you begin to put things together, you understand why I started at the end and came to the front. They were all in the same place, but they were not all in the same space. They only saw a flashing light, but he heard the command. So he, before King Agrippa, he said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision because he saw something. Something is calling you. A voice is on the inside of you. And that voice, listen, the reason why you are not, you are so agitated in your sleep is because, listen, something is calling you. Is calling me. Rebecca was barren. She couldn't have children. And Isaac, the Bible says, prayed. Rebecca got pregnant. But it was a, it was a, a difficult pregnancy. There was violence on the inside of her until she went to God and said, if all is well with me, why am I like this? Somebody is asking that same question. And listen to what the Lord said. God didn't say demons after you. He said there are two nations in your womb. The reason why you are agitated is that two destinies are on the inside of you. You know why you can't sleep? You know why you are agitated? You know why you are so flustered? It's because destiny is calling you and you are not listening. I stand in the name of everything that is holy. May you never know rest until you have brought forth your destiny. Listen, the labor may be hard but push it because you place that thing on the inside of you. The dream will never die. Let that dream come. Push it. The waters will break one day. Work it, work it, work it, work it. Let them laugh at you because the whole world laughed at Noah until the flood came. A day will come. Listen, today you are speaking to your vision. You are working your vision. And one day your vision will speak for you and you will keep quiet. Man of God, when I went to Atlanta, went to Atlanta, I did not know anybody. When I say anybody, I mean I knew nobody. Nobody to come and stay with you. No, nobody. My wife was seven months pregnant, Pastor Gloria. I rented a car from the airport and I bought a map. In those days, there were no GPS. I didn't even know where I was going. I was like Abraham. You know, Hebrews 11, by faith, Abraham obeyed. When he was called to go to a place for which he was received as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise. 
as in a strange country, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, first with whom of the same promise, for they looked forward to a city which had foundations, which builder and maker is God. There are still more than the Abrahams. I can, it, it's, 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 it's in my biography, it's coming out soon. It's called Two for the Road. Me and my wife, Two for the Road. I'm telling stories for younger ones to know that some of us didn't become who we are just by lying down. I wish I could tell you it has been an easy walk. I wish I could tell you that I confessed it and immediately I possessed it. I wish I could tell you that I have never been betrayed before. I wish I could tell you that everything was okay. I wish I could tell you that I had a lot of money to do ministry. I wish I could tell you. That's why I tell people, when people say, you are a gift, I tell, I, please, don't insult me. I'm not a gift. I'm a result. Man of God, I fasted until I became like a rake. And sometimes, you know when Paul was talking about his testimony, you know when you read only 1 Corinthians, you see his gift. But God gave us 2 Corinthians to see the man. When he talks about his sufferings. Let me tell you something. Especially you women. You wear three rings in life. The engagement ring, the wedding ring, and the sofa ring. Don't look at me like that. That's why, listen, I know you are young. If you are, when you are dating, open your eyes. When you are dating, open your eyes. Shine your eyes. Daughter, you hear me? The word data comes from the etymological root. <laughs> uh, dating comes from data. Dating, it comes from data. Information. So when you are dating, it's information. You are finding out information. <clears throat> Am I talking to somebody? That is not when your hands are in places and your tongue is in somebody's throat. No. <laughs> Can I talk to you, my sons and daughters here? Am I? No, sit straight, sit straight. I'm talking to you. If you hide this way, I'll go this way. There are some questions. Listen, when you are ask the guy, have you been arrested before? It's a good question. Valid. When, when he begins to clear his throat, he says, Have you been arrested before? Or ask him, what is the best book you have read lately? Have you read a book without photos in it? Do you know where the city library is? People come and tell you all kinds of stories and you believe. What was the last good book you read? The one without photos. I'm not talking about Ali Baba and the 40 teeth. I'm talking about a better book. There are questions. Listen, you need to ask. Number one, is he saved? Very important. Hmm? Thank you. Is he saved? Number two, is he sane? Because some people are crazy. I'm telling you, some people are crazy. So ask yourself, are you saying, is he saying? Number, number, number three, is, this, is the person stable? If they have had four, uh, five jobs in three weeks, you are not stable. And finally, is he sexy? Oh, come on, 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 come on. You are, listen, you are going to wake up every morning with a person. So do you like what you are seeing? That is why, young man, let me address you. I, I hope I'm doing okay. Do you, I, I hope you like me already. Young man, young man, wave your hands to me. Let me tell you. Listen, listen. Pray, oh. Hmm. Uh, pray oh. me this December I would have been married for 40 years if if I died a thousand times and I came back I will marry the same woman 1,001 times I kid you not I kid you not when we were getting married what we saw was what we got young man today you can never tell Thank you. Because women are the only creation of God who attempt to improve on what God has created. I'm getting there. God will give them eyelash eyebrows and they say to God, wait. 
We want to show you something. So they take their own blade. Then they take off the one God gave to them. Then they take their paint brush and they design their own. And they say, now check me out, God. What's that? How that? How that? You know what I mean? Women are the only creation of God who can leave home at nine in the morning with short hair and come back six hours later with long hair. This is miracles of biblical proportions. So, brother, pray, oh, pray. Media, may I'm gone, oh, 40 years, I'm gone. I kid you not. Because you are going to go on the honeymoon and you are going to find that everything is borrowed. You take the eyelashes. <laughs> but Gloria, you know, one time I went to visit a family and I went to use their washroom. And there were eyelashes looking at me. Then they were blinking like, hey! Don't take the eyelashes and put it there. Take fingernails and put it in the box. They take their hair on hunger. They hang it. There are other body parts that I don't even want to go there. Then the man too will get angry and take off his dentures. Say, now let's marry. So what was I saying before I started misbehaving? Exposure. In invitation. And finally, initiative. Jesus gave Simon Peter the invitation. But it was up to Peter to step out. He will give you the word. He will give you an idea. But he will move your legs. You must determine that going forward from this conference. You will step out. There are some of you. You have incredible businesses sitting on the inside of you. You are a whole conglomerate. You are powerful. God has given you some ideas that he has never given to any human being before. Why are you sleeping on it? Take the initiative. Start something. Start that business. It may look like it's nothing. Please start it. Because you never know. Is it a course that you have to take? Pay the price and take that course. Do it. Have you started a project? Push it. Do you know that more millionaires and billionaires have been made in this world during the COVID than any other time in history? What is the difference? Ideas. They took the initiative. Look at all the things that people sold for us that were of no use. The concoctions. The masks that won't mask. Ideas. And we are playing catch up. And we are saying I'm the head and not the tail. If this is the head, I don't want to see the tail. Then they need do something. Maybe it's ministry is on the inside of you. You are in a very good house to bring ministry out of you. Why are you hiding? Why are you afraid? I didn't ask you to clap, so if you are clapping, please clap well. Because I don't like it when people attempt to clap and they don't finish clapping. Work it. Take that step, take the initiative. You want to marry? Take the initiative. Then don't wait till I, I, I want to like this. I'm staying here. Yeah. Even waiting. Uh, uh, what, what does the guy has? He has nothing. But he has listen. Never, ever, ever, ever think that people have nothing to offer. Because you never know. Listen, I started life, I was so poor that I couldn't even pay attention. That's why I do not apologize for my, my prosperity. No, no, no. No, no, no. I don't feel. No, no. Because if you know where I've come from, you will not, listen, you will not understand my jubilation when you haven't seen my tribulation. When, when I got married, man of God, I had a bed. Me alone knew how to lie on the bed without trouble. Because if you make mistake and you lie at a particular but the whole bed comes down, then I have to fix it again. I thank God for the wife who just knew that it would be okay one day. And men, you know something? Prepare yourself. Get yourself ready. Jacob, listen, he worked for seven years and another seven years, which means true love works and true love waits. Take the 
the initiative. Do something. There's, there are giftings on the inside of you that you can bring out to make this house a better place than it is now. Why are you holding back? You don't need a microphone. Microphone magnifies your foolishness. Oh yes. Standing under the lights, they see your potholes more. Do something. Start something. Listen. My name is Franco Fosopia and I approve this message. I'm done for tonight. I'm going to pray with you. Oh, somebody bless the Lord tonight. Somebody bless the Lord tonight. We are going to take two, some two prayer points. I know you've been praying all week, so I'll not, help, I'll not trouble you. But listen, listen. You were never built by God to stay in that boat of containment. I would rather take two steps on water and sink than to live my whole life stay in a boat wondering how it will be like to walk on water. Simon Peter took some walk. He said, but he sank. Have you walked? He's the only one amongst the twelve who had that experience. And the beautiful thing is that the one who said come was the one who stretched his hands to lift him. Tonight, I don't know what has been ignited on the inside of you. There's an idea. There's something ministry. There's leadership. There's a business. There's something. Crying out for expression. Maybe life has thrown you a bad curve. And because of that, you feel like maybe this is not my. It is yours. You are going to move again. You are going to lift up your voice. And in 120 seconds, aka two minutes, you are going to engage with God. There are so many things that I've said tonight. But I don't know what resounded in your spirit. But in two minutes, you are going to lift up your voice and engage with God. You need, you, need, you need an exposure. You need something. You need for the idea to come out. You are tired, but in this, in this camp and in this conference, you are refiring one more time. Yes, reviver is that, Lord, give me some new mental reviver. Give me emotional reviver. Give me something. I need to step out of where I am. You, where you are coming from is not as important as where you are going. Lift up your voice and begin to talk to him. 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 Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him.
I heard the Lord saying, this house is going to be an ideas factory. Ideas factory. Because in the presence, there are ideas. And ideas rule the world. One good idea that comes to you, that you take initiative and action by the power of the Holy Spirit, will let you and your descendants eat forever. Ideas. Everything that we see around us was somebody's idea. Somebody thought about magnifying voices and the idea turned into microphones and speakers. Somebody had an idea to make instruments to make melody for somebody's idea. The chairs we sit on, the clothes on our back, the shoes on our feet, the cars we drive, somebody's idea. As your hands are lifted, I am praying for an anointing to descend upon you. Problem solving anointings. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said problem solving anointings to come upon you. Because you are rewarded and you are paid for the problems you solve, not the problems you caused. So may God give you ideas that will solve human problems. And you'll be paid for that. That is my declaration over you tonight. May God Almighty give you exposure. May God Almighty help you to get the invitation in your spirit that will never leave you. Amen. And may you grant, gain the wisdom to take the initiative and to find manifestation. So I have declared and so it will be. In the name of Jesus, the resurrected Lord. Somebody agree with me and say amen. amen. Bless the Lord somebody tonight. Yes. Yes. Have you learned anything tonight? Have you learned anything tonight? I don't like the way sometimes your people look at me. I may have to escape. How much do you pay to smile? You know, when you smile, it improves your face value. Thank you. I hope you have been blessed. This is only the biggest. This one is the starter. Appetizer. It's going to get better and better and better. So for those who didn't show up, tell them that they have kicked an iron ball. Amen. I said amen. You know, a pastor came to church, I think on a, a, a second day. He said, how many of you were in church yesterday? Half of the people raised up your hands. Now a few are not here, another half. He said, those of you who are here, tell them what we finished what I told them yesterday. Those who are not here, go and listen to them about that. So those who didn't come, when you meet them next week, tell them about number 12. Get your t-shirt, get your hoodie. Right? I am number 12. And when people ask you, tell them you won't understand. You won't get it. You won't get it. You agree with me? Jesus said to the disciples of Mount Tabor, he said, tell no one until remember that? Tell no one. So just put it there, I am number 12. And people are saying, what is that? I say, you won't understand. Because if I told you, you'll be depressed because you are a boat potato. You refuse to get out of containment. You are not ordinary. When I see you next time and I say, how are you? I don't want any long stories. You tell me that I broke through and I'm walking on water. I'm walking on water. I'm walking on water. Let's bless God with an offering tonight. Do we have envelopes? Oh no, or we do. Okay, the card machine and things. I like my old fashioned envelopes. And if you do, bring it to me. Bring me the envelopes. You can write on it. I do this because, yeah, bring it to me, daughter. I won't bite you, I promise you. The worst thing I can do is spit, but I finished preaching, so no more. Everywhere I go, I don't do the same thing unless I hear. There are places that I've gone to the moment I say amen. My A, my foot is in the door, man. I'm in the car. Places I'm confident, I do this. But I want you to take an envelope from me. Tonight, just sow a seed. 100 pounds just that into this and make it for me 
100 pounds is a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money. The reason I'm doing this is that I'm trying to push you out of your boat. Out of your boat. I don't know how tomorrow is going to be. But I'll... I've enjoyed myself. I don't know about you. I've enjoyed it too. Why you the one misbehaving at the back? I know. Kiran, isn't it? Is it Karen or Kiran? Kiran, yeah. I, I, I've spied you already. How's your church? You do amazing. More amazing than your dad. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll come and beat him. Even when I'm dead, I'll come back and beat him and then go back. <laughs> Bless you, my daughter. I'm still waiting for you. You have to break that barrier. You know, man of God, about some 15 years ago, my wife and I made a promise that there's a particular offering that we will not give beneath. It's been 15 years. Because I read in the book and it told us that now he who gives seed to the sower and bread for food, multiply the seed so, which means God doesn't multiply my bread. He multiplies my seed. And he won't give seed to the one who will sow. A lot of people have eaten their seed because they thought it was bread. But he says multiply the seed so and increase the fruit of your righteousness. Take one for me. And when you have done that, whether you did it electronically, just come put it here on the altar for me. Who is picking up one from me? I'm just doing two and I'm done. God bless you, buddy. Who is coming up? Daughter, blessings. You are saving that hundred pounds for crocs. Crocs, crocs. I know crocs, man. I know crocs. <laughs> or those jeans that feels like they didn't wash well in the washing machine. They are all good. I'm still waiting for some of the musicians. Because sometimes when it's like taking off money like that, musicians get very busy. I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to the world here. <laughs> so that they pretend like they haven't heard me. I'll be jumping on their case. Let's do that. I'm waiting for you. Then my second and my last one is this. I know there are some that you don't want your left hand to know what your right hand is doing. So there's a figure on your heart that you want to do. It's between you and God. Take it from me. Take an envelope from me. Take it from me. Quickly, quickly. It's a figure between you and God. I have not mentioned that. I mentioned 100 and after that I'm done. This one is between you and God. Because there are people who don't want people to know. So it's you. Now there's something about the envelopes that I'm giving. If you take them home, exactly at midnight, the envelopes will rise up and start slapping you. So don't take them. <laughs> Somebody just heard it. Laughing out loud. Once you've done, once you've done it, come lay the envelope here. I've got this six in my hand. Somebody, you have to take one from me. I've got six of them. Come and take one. Take one for your son. Take one for your daughter. Take one for your business. Take one for ministry. Take one. Take one for something. Because I don't like putting this envelope down. Anybody? Daughter, are you coming up? Where the one leading the worship? When I grow up, I want to sing like you very good. You are very annoying. You are too good. When people are good like that, they are very annoying. Because I can't sing like that. I mean, why can't I sing? Like you sing too? Amen. A bit. Uh, you are my kind of man, man. Yeah, we sing a bit. Yeah, we sing a bit. I've got three more. Who is taking one? Anybody? Is the brother running away or something? But 
you coming up? Yes, you guy. I really like you. Yeah, we like him. He's contagious, church. Last two. Take that thing for a breakthrough. I'm not going to tell you if you give, tomorrow you are going to be a millionaire. I will not lie to you. You will not be. You may not even be a hundred near. But it's a seed that you sow in an atmosphere like that. I do it for a reason. Last two. Please be seated. Last two. Anybody? Don't take the envelopes home. Do that. Engage. Engage. Well, thank you very much, Pastor Chris and Pastor Gloria. I've enjoyed myself. Now my work is done. I'm going home. I, I think the two envelopes that Papa left, I don't want him to take it with him. So... Please, let's get it. Josie, come and take one. I'll give you the money. God bless you. Are you married? You have a beloved. So she speaks Sean, now she speaks in the in the belly. That's Cindy City Way. She she's she's Cindy City Way. Yeah. Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Very pretty girl. And uh, see me. <laughs> if the Lord is speaking to you, see me. <laughs> Yesterday I caused a lot of problems. It looks like today, today there's another. Yeah? We have a lot of nice young men here. Have you seen any? You haven't looked? It's your first time. Okay. You sit down. We'll talk about it. Last envelope. Last envelope. I give you this envelope, what would you do with it? You actually saw a seed. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed? Oh, I said, have you been blessed? We have our pastor here, Pastor Benga. I want us to welcome him. I want us to welcome him. Please, please, please. Pastor, come and say hello to us. Praise the Lord. Uh, it's been such a wonderful time. And uh, what I've had tonight, my notes are full. And uh, such a great pleasure to be here, sir. And uh, I'm so happy for what God is doing here. I pray that every one of us will be transformed at the end of this convention. Thank you very much. God bless you. Oh, God bless you. And then I have my own sister here. This is, uh, she's, she's a, she was here before the church started. She's a sister. How many know Mabna? Mabi. So Mabi's mother is here. So let's welcome Lady Pastor. She, she used, looks younger than Mabna, isn't it? Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. Well, I'm very happy to be here this evening. I've also been blessed by the message just as we have all been. And I pray that we'll take the message and run with it. That we'll surely be number 12 even as we walk around. That our lives will be turned around. That we'll go and do exploits. Thank God for your church. 
happy to be here and I pray that you continue to do well. Support your pastors, as the Reverend said, and I believe that your life will not be the same. You will be blessed. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. It's been great and um, we are getting ready to go home. Tomorrow we start early so that we can have more. How many want more? So tomorrow, come early. Doors will be open by 5 o'clock, so come early and enjoy the service. Stand to your feet. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. Thank you that, Lord, there's been a revival, but the revival, apart from being spiritual, is also mental. We are going to go back with a renewed mind. We are going to go back and do exploits for you. Indeed, we are going to be the number 12, the one that steps out of the boat, the boat of confinement to God, and do, oh God, even that which you have destined and purpose for us to do. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your enabling power that makes us do different and achieve different from our upbringing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's share the grace. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Be nice to somebody on your way out.